and we'd like to welcome you to a 2012 Formula One season. We will be following Bortz as we always have through his uh, career mode season so far. So far we've completed 2011. I'm not aware of his drive in 2010. But welcome, welcome to the 2012 Q1 session of qualifying. We're going to be having a fun season, having a fun start, have some uh, overload of information being delved on you. I'm not a technical person, so I'm just going to ignore this. You watch and have fun with it. Well, if you've missed the 2011 season, you miss out on a lot. It was really competitive, really fast, really fun, and surprisingly, Bortz managed to get the HRT into what? Eighth position, constructors, HRT, eighth place. It was an amazing season. Bortz having a, a lot of tracks, especially in the beginning. It was kind of mixed. He got in the mid to backfield a little bit. But as the season progressed, you saw that he got real comfortable with the setups, real comfortable with the ride, the HRT car. Put that car into positions it shouldn't otherwise be. For an example, the last result, the last race in Brazil, he ended up sixth place, started seventh, started seventh, and finished sixth. One position may not seem like a lot, but an HRT, which was expected to be a back marker, oh, it was just an amazing season. I'm still raving about it. Now this year, as we'll see, Bortz is driving with Caterham Lotus, being uh, now Caterham Lotus. I think transferred its name over the Lotus Renault Lotus thing of last year and has become Lotus and Caterham. Caterham, Caterham is now the team that Bortz is driving for. The funny thing is, uh, Caterham now has Kurz and is working with Renault. So now the Caterham car has Kurz, which should greatly increase its odds of being a midfield runner, and has a Renault engine, making it pretty fast. It looks like a lot of the cars are competitive car this up. season. So I don't know how well the Bortz is going to do with this Caterham car against these new uh, 2012 spec cars as he goes out. It was a great season last uh, last year in 2011. We had some great upsets, some great some great races by the top competitors. It was kind of pr uh, procession in some times, some places, but Bortz oh, with that HRT, it'll be a wonder what HRT is going to do this season. Now driving with, uh, I believe, Cartha Kane and De La Rosa. We'll see how those two guys are managed to pick up the HRT in this season. Uh, now with Bortz driving Caterham, I can't wait to see what Caterham um, Cater is going to do with this year, how they're going to do this year. Bortz, I expect this car to be in the front. He may be in the front. If he can get that HRT of 2011 in the front and finish uh, 11th in the Constructor, the Drivers' Championship, not, a, not bad, but considering that he had a lot of finishes in the later half of the season, he was in the top 10, was in the was contention for the lead at a few times, and I think won one race. I think this season with this new Caterham, Kurz, a Renault engine, a very nice design car, I think this Caterham can go definitely mid-pack or even front-runner for the entire season. We'll have to see, as uh, I can't tell you who's on track right now, it looks like he's just warming up. Now, I'm not too familiar with the whole rule things. I know he's on prime tires, which the way they look, they're the uh, medium compound. Hard being the harder compound that's more gray, if you've uh, seen those in the game. So his teammate this year is Kovalainen. Kovalainen had a good season last year for Caterham. Even though Caterham finished in the back last place, they listed him last place, even though HRT and a bunch of other teams didn't have, uh, didn't have any points either, but unfortunately that's where you get listed. If, I think it's listed upon your most results. Like if I finish, if I finish 17th and uh, Cartha Canyon finishes 18th, I'm one spot ahead of them, so my team will be listed first because I had a better result, that kind of thing. The uh, winner of last season was Alonzo with Weber and Vettel following. Weber second, Vettel third. Red Bull obviously won the Constructors, Ferrari and the McLaren. It was a good, good season. Now I just can't wait to see what's going on here. I am not a technical person. I did not watch. I have not seen this beforehand. We're watching it live. You're watching it live. I'm watching it live. And uh, the earlier the setups, I was I'm not very good with setups. I'm not a technical person. I just flip things around and say, please God, let it work. That's how I drive. He when last season we saw that with his cars, it seemed like the heavier car he had a hard time with. Once he started losing fuel, he got he handled the turns a lot better. The tight turns, the sharp turns were where he shined at. So we'll have to see what he does with this Caterham car this year. Now he gets a, he's 1.628, uh, one second, uh, 1.6 seconds behind Maldonado, who set the fastest first sector of uh, 52.8. Uh, 
unfortunately, Will, uh, Maldonado's in a William. A Williams is pretty good. This uh, In the real life season, Williams has been doing fantastic, I think. I'm a big Maldonado Massa fan. Uh, bring on the hate. Can't touch me. But uh, we'll see what he can do this year. Coming around at 121, I think he might be able to hit a 129, 130. Actually, I'm probably going to eat those words probably 131, 132. Oh, wow. 130. That's pretty good. He's seventh at the current moment behind Kovalainen just by a bit. But as always, you get out there and your first lap's not always your... The first hot lap like he just did is not always your best. Uh, Bortz more than likely will bring around a better result. This is only qualifying and you want to save the tires. The big thing is during the ra real races last season, we saw that Bortz didn't have the speed. But what he did have is he had the consistency to keep the car stable, keep it nice and dandy. And then, of course, he made the tires last for such a long time that he pitted less than the AI and got more track time, which meant that he got more laps in while the other the AI was pitting. So we'll have to see what he can do this year. Comes around a little faster. Let's see what he can do in sector one. Comes through the turn. And that's what I meant from the last lap when I said it when he passed the starting line on the last lap, this lap, early this lap. He uh, did faster, so I'd expect him to either get fast or stay about the same. He might have to adjust the setup, but that's a very fast time. It's still not better to beat his opponent, his, uh, not his opponent, sorry, his teammate, but he is doing pretty dang well, and I should be saying that he's doing really well in the fact that this is the second lap and he's already managed to cut the time almost, almost, uh, I can't do the math on this spot, but he cut it down such a, so big, and now I think this lap he's going to be able to boost his weight to the next, to uh, the top of the standard. 128 came down by, I think, two seconds. Yep, two seconds. He's doing well. Two seconds off one lap, so if he does it, I think, by just my estimates, how I do, I'm, I'm saying he might hit a 126. Oh, he's stopping. Only two laps of fuel. He probably could make one more lap around, but we'll have to see. So, I, I would have gone another lap around. If he gets stuck, he gets stuck. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a car literally run out of fuel to the point where it stops on track. I think it just goes down to, like, 60 miles an hour. That's how fast you get limited to. Just have to see. And there's Maldonado being the moving chicane at the moment. Not going really, not going anywhere really any fast. Really, in a, in a, not in a hurry. Obviously, Bortz isn't pushing it so far. He's on lean. He's just taking his time. So once we get back to the, once we get back to the garage, we'll get a good look at him. Get a good look at his setup. But it was a real surprise that Bortz is now driving for Caterham. I think last last year, early last year, there was a lot of rumor that, hey, he wanted a better drive. He was doing real well with the HRT, much better than expected. Was actually impressing some people, and he actually, uh, I think there was rumor that he got an offer from Sauber to move up to the bigger, the midfield cars. Obviously, that's not true. I don't know what in the negotiating table put him at Caterham. Maybe he just wants to be the backmarker hero, where he gets the backmarker cars in the, obs you know, obscene positions. We'll have to see. He's doing so uh, so well so far. It looks like the car's got some good handling to it, good speed. Can't really see where that that Renault engine's coming into effect. I don't know if he's been using curves. Does he even know he has curves? Not sure. I would like to iterate that he is on the primes. He's on the medium. We'll have to see what his uh, what his other what other drivers are using on the track if they're using options yet or not. I don't think they will be considering his Q1, but you never know. This season in real life, we've seen a lot of people pull out pr uh, options in Q1, which is real funny. And of course, it is. It was said at the beginning of the real season that uh, Australia, ah, sorry, Australia is not the biggest uh, indicator of how the season is actually going to go. It just tells you how, just tells you how the cars are doing at that moment. It's not a good indicator of how the rest of the season is going to go. Maybe going slow here, but might do like the HR, go the way of the HR team by the mid, mid, mid season to the end of the season. He's pounding out fast laps and getting up in the top, which I do expect him to get. If he can get an HRT without curves, bad, badly designed, very slow, and get an HRT up into the top 10, I think he can do it with the catering. And I think I just ate my words without paying attention. I think he actually is up 
a little bit. If you would just go up a little bit on this t the timing table, the timetable, I'd like to see it. But unfortunately, I can't. I can't make him. So I wasn't paying attention. I was too busy looking at my notes. But uh, I think he is up, actually up in the. He's obviously yep. He's above the cutoff line. The cutoff line between that seventh and eighteenth, where the eighteenth and down is blue, and where the seventeen and up is normal color. That cutoff point for 18 to 24, the last whatever places, at the end of Q1, if you're in that blue range, 18 or lower, uh, down to 24th, you are going to be cut from Q1 and you will not advance. You will not advance to the next session, so unfortunately, his teammate, Kovalainen, isn't, I don't, if that's any, any, any indication of how the AI is going to do, I'm not sure his teammate is going to be able to deliver. Some interesting track changes this this year. Uh, Austin, Texas, is the site of the American Grand Prix, which will be held in November in real life, and it will be held later in the season for Bortz. I can't wait to see that. I'm from the United States, specifically the Midwest, and I just can't wait for that that race. Otherwise, you got Istanbul. Turkey, I think that track got taken out. That was a disappointment. I really liked that track, too. Really fun track to drive in 2011. A lot of the drivers liked it. Port's going down to 15th. Now, now on the screen, not a good sign. If he gets below that 18th, it should be some cause for Mori. He's got eight minutes left in the session. I, If I were him, I, he's only done three laps, so his tires are pretty good at this point. He can make them last. His setups are very gentle on the tires. Mine are like man-eaters. They eat those things up. We'll have to see once he gets down to four minutes. If if he, uh, once we get down to four minutes, if he's on that 16th, 17th area, I'd go out and just do one more quick lap. I don't see it impossible. Oh, that is Borch's time. My bad. Uh, oh, I missed it. But I don't think I don't think it would be impossible for him to cut his time just a little bit to get ahead a little more. I think I saw Perez above him. Perez doing good this year. Got uh, a few times on the podium for the first time. That was awesome. Fellow North American, shout out. doing the lonely sitting of the uh, of the garage, just sitting in the garage looking at the timetable, twiddling our thumbs, waiting for the countdown to go down. At this point, I don't think he's got too much to worry about. Garaging isn't a Lotus. That's a pretty fast car. Maybe able to, well, more than likely should be able to pass board. So once he gets down to that 16th slot, I would actually consider going out about the four minute mark. Not much else to talk about this year, this uh, this year so far. Just some driver changes. We got Ragaz Gene and uh, Hecky Raikkonen. My bad. Uh, I'm just messing these names up. Raikkonen and Ragaz Gene at Lotus. You got Kovalainen and uh, Petrov. Petrov, the Russian. Love Petrov. He's a funny guy. I've seen some of his interviews. Love that thick Russian accent. Just amazing. Now back to the uh, Bortz' 2011 series. Now like I said, Alonso got first, Weber, then Vettel. I did see a lot of those races. Alonso in that Ferrari was just flying. Massa got sixth place, so he's doing, he was doing all right, I guess. I'm a Massa and Maldonado fan, I'll reiterate. I was really happy to see Massa up in sixth place in Bortz' this season. I don't remember what his constructor, his driver's champion position was, but <laughs> I was happy to see him finish sixth in the, in the, um, Brazil race, and it looks like he's put on some options, going to go out. I would like to notify people that once you go out and you qualify on the tire, those are the tires you got to start on during the race. So if you go out and you set a really fast time but destroy your tires and don't make it to Q3, and uh, you're unfortunately going to be stuck with those really destroyed option tires when you go out for the race. This is an FYI. Bortz in the 18th, that's what I was worrying about. His time wasn't the best. Fortunately, needing to bring out the options early, despite being in a catering. So this is very surprising. I, my expectations for this race, this qualifying session, would be him, like with the HRT of last season, easily bumping it up into midfield, early front, front pack. 
unfortunately, down in 18th, uh, now 19th, having to go out and put another lap out, another lap in, a couple more laps more than likely to get that caterum up to snuff. And once he gets to Q2, unfortunately, since he's brought out these options early, I don't expect him to do an, any more um, any more laps in Q2. I think he might just sit it out where he, where he is. Unless he wants to go out and set a fast lap, a uh, few laps, and just hope and guess to me that that's where he'll end up and pray to God that's where he ends up. Five minutes to go. So five minutes left to qualifying. He's got five minutes, and these options and a little bit of fuel to make an impression. So Perez sets a 126. That's the mark. He needs a 127 to get past Vettel. Put Vettel in the back. That would be an interesting start to see Vettel down in 18th. Knocked out in Q1. That would just be uh, very impressive. That would be funny. I do like Vettel. Nothing against him. He's my age. He's a young guy like me, so I root for him whenever I can. But Massa Maldonado, I do. Coming around, 4 minutes, 25 seconds. Here he goes up to Rich, I think. Looking at my notes this whole time, trying to find things to talk about. Here we go. Cold tires. Front and right is cold. Looks like the brakes in the rear are a little... Not, not the rear, no, that's good. Rear tires are a little... Looks like a little colder, especially the right side. The right side looks a little colder than front right, especially. May not have as much grip. And... That sucks. That's the most frustrating thing when you're in these situations. You're competitive. You got that red veil, you want to do fast, you know you need to do fast, and then you mess up, you just want to take whatever you're using to drive and throw it through the screen. At this moment, he needs a quick, the reason he's on lean, but still going really fast through the, through, uh, through the lap, is that he, you see that 328, that's as much time as he's got left to set, and if a lap takes him about a minute 28 to finish, you can obviously see that he's only got about three laps worth of uh, three laps worth of time, uh, three laps worth of time he can do to get a, qualif a new qualification lap in. And he's a 19th, four seconds off the mark on that last sector, which I don't know why I'm even repeating that. Just derp and derp and looking at the screen. He's got three minutes now exact, so he's got about if he pushes it right, he has three laps worth of quality laps you can do, hot laps you can do, so once he gets around this, these turns, flick that engine up to hot and just hope the fuel doesn't run out until he crosses for the last time. So once we cross that line, we'll have that much time. And I think he'll have, he'll have two, he'll have enough for two laps, that's as much as he'll have. Two laps worth of time, two laps, uh, two quality laps you can do. When he needs to push it, you'll see him go over the curbs a little bit. You'll see him take really hard braking lines, really pushing the car. It's a light car, so with the sharp turns, you should see him excel at. Not pushing as hard as he could through there. Pushing a little bit through there, not as hard as he could, I guess. Coming through here, flat out. Over the curve a little bit. Throwing it through the corner. Coming up here, and he takes a hard braking line, goes over. He's pushing it, he's pushing it. Took a lot of the curves right there. Flat out, oh, DRS and curves open. Early, uh, late braking, and goes wide, keep pushing boards, keep pushing, gun it, gun it. Curves out of there, he does know he has curves. DRS open, flying through here, quickly, you gotta push it, gotta push it, gotta push it, hold it, hold it. Goes a little slow, maybe screwed that up, but he's still pushing. He's only .1 off, he's only one tenth off, he can do it. Through this corner, pushing it, pushing it. pushing it some more. You want to go a little wide when you come through those turns when you're pushing like that, because the, le the less of a turn you're making, the less sharp the turn, the, the gentler the turn is that you're making, going a little wide, the more acceleration time you have, and the less loss of acceleration you're having by turning sharply, if that makes any sense. The sharper you turn, the less acceleration you have coming out of the, sh of the corner. Going wide a little bit gives you extra time to push. So here we go. One minute, not gonna have enough time to set another one. This one has to be, this one has to be a flying lap. You have to push, Boris, push. Not pushing it through that sector. Wants to take it nice and easy. Flat out through there. So you can hear the engine uh, slow down a little bit. Not pushing as hard as he could through there, but still takes it nice and easy. He's taking it gentle. He's pushing, but being gentle. He's trying not to. He's trying to save the tires, but not destroy. 
Gonna go a little wide here, keep pushing ports. Oh, goes a little wide, misses up on that corner, slows down a little bit, may hurt him. He's doing better, he's two, uh, two tenths off, is better than his last sector. Two tenths better. Last, uh, last time through there, he was one tenth off. Coming through this turn, he's only got a few more, oh, that's gonna kill it. That's killed it. If he still manages to save it through here, I'll be amazed. Come on, Bortz, save it. You gotta push it, you gotta make up for the little slide. And we'll see him cross the... He's not gonna make it. If he did, I'll eat my words, and he didn't. Enough for 18th. Look at that, Felipe Massa making me eat my words. So it looks like Bortz will be starting with the Caterham in 17th position for the race. He'll have those worn options that he destroyed on those last few laps doing some crucial crunch time laps. As you can see, he's only about a tenth off from Sebastian Vettel, who just barely managed to keep himself in there like he's been doing this season. Unfortunately, Bortz did not have enough to put it in there, and if he did, Sebastian could have done better and relegated him, so just not a good... His teammate, 20th, so it doesn't look like it's going to be a good, good start for the season for Caterham. Bortz did awesome this uh, turn last time with HRT, or at least a little better. But, like I said, this isn't indicative of the season, and he has a whole lot of time left.